Okay, good. Well, uh, thanks for coming to my talk. This talk is on how to think independently. And um, hopefully you will get to see some of the uh, presentation that I designed uh, for it, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens. So, um, uh, thinking independently cannot be conveyed very easily, because I can't, I can't tell you how to do it, because if you're doing what I tell you, <laughs> you're not thinking independently. <laughs> um, but um, I've always been pretty good at it, so I am trouble engaging with other people. But thinking, thinking on my own, that's, uh, that I can do. So for my first slide, I had a picture of a Frank Frazetta barbarian picture, Conan the Barbarian, because I feel like a barbarian trapped in civilization. <laughs> so barbarians know how to think independently, because they're living by their wits. And that's what you're doing if you're in Bitcoin. So when people grow up in our society, they're not given a lot of opportunities to think independently. They're provided with models where somebody else is doing at least some of their thinking. Um, and we have models like parent-child and uh, boss-employee uh, and government uh, corporation, though it's really the other way around. But, <laughs> but um, uh, if in a, in a capitalist society, you're both owner and employee at the same time, at least most people should be, because most, uh, most people can't live just by being owner alone and if you're an employee, eventually you do have the ability to get some savings, hopefully. So when you have savings and you own investments and you have a job, then you're both at the same time. You're both boss and employee. But our society teaches people to be employees and it does not teach people to be in charge, okay? So uh, let's see. So, okay, so next. Next on my presentation, I had a picture of uh, Vizini from uh, The Princess Bride, because you know, he says, uh, he says, Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, morons. <laughs> so he looks like an independent thinker because he is not intimidated by the great men in the Western canon. So. Uh, Turns out later in the movie, the movie shows us that he's just dumb, but as far as we knew at that point, maybe he's just pretending to be stupid. So I think that a real independent thinker, it's somewhat difficult to distinguish them from a stupid person. So I like Vizini because he's somebody who is, uh, he could be stupid, but maybe he's just pretending at least at that point in the movie. Um, and uh, like I think that, you know, like if you talk to a social justice warrior, they want to get rid of the Western canon. And then people who are traditionalists, they, they want to worship everybody in the Western canon. But an independent thinker is not intimidated by the idea of just calling Plato a moron, you know? That's, that's, that's in between, that's, that, that is the, that's the, uh, the sweet spot, okay? And I think that uh, there are people in Bitcoin who are trying to be too leadery around here. Uh, we can't have, uh, we can't have people who are trying to be too, too much like leaders, okay? Because Bitcoin is an adversarial environment. And bit, so next I had a picture of Risk, the board game. <laughs> and in Risk, uh, you have to make alliances. But ultimately, you're on your own, okay? So anybody that you make an alliance with has to be 
temporary, okay? Because there's some point where you don't want the alliance anymore. You just want his money, right? So we are playing a board game. It's a highly cooperative board game because most of us are working to try to make Bitcoin more valuable. But it's not totally cooperative, is it? So thinking independently is your only defense. Okay, what if you were playing Risk and you started asking a different player for what you should do? Obviously, that's not, that's not good. Okay, so uh, thinking, thinking independently means that you, you make your own investment decisions. So I show you uh, some new investment thing in Bitcoin and you tell me whether you like it or not without consulting an outside source. And, um, well, I mean, you, you can look at data, right? But you, you do your own research. There isn't somebody else who is going like, hmm. Or, uh, no, that's not a, not a good one. If, you're, if, you've got, if you've got input from somebody else and you just, he's telling you when to buy and sell, that's not, that's not good. That is a weakness. So you're going to be manipulated eventually. And of course, people don't know, don't know that they're doing it. Because people avoid, avoid risk naturally. They don't have to have some evil plan. They just do it. So if somebody is telling you when to buy and sell, uh, and you're listening too much, eventually they're going to figure out how to push risk onto you. Okay, so then bad things happen to you, and they do not happen to the person telling you when to buy and sell. So uh, next I had a quote by uh, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt that's about how, how scams work, where he says, um, you have to sacrifice for the greater good. And I don't remember the exact quote, but that's basically what he's saying. So. That's how all scams work in Bitcoin. Well, I mean, there's level zero scams. That's where I just take your money and run. But the more subtle scams are, I push risk onto you, and then bad things eventually happen to you and not to me, okay? So that's what Franklin Delano Roosevelt is gonna talk about in the quote, which you'll hopefully see at some point. But he's saying you have to, you have to sacrifice for the greater good. And he says, he says we, we all have to sacrifice for the greater good but he's not actually talking about himself, right? So uh, we have to sacrifice for the greater good. And then, uh, you know, then he talks about leadership in a totally abstract way, like he's not talking about himself. See, so he says, uh, um, so he's getting, he's getting you to take on risk for him, right? He's not taking on risk, you're taking on risk. Um, so he was talking about war in this quote but um, works for everything. Every, every, uh, every Bitcoin scam that is not, that is above level zero is like a, you take on risk for me and you don't think about how, how it's happening. Then eventually bad things happen to you. Um, and this is how the upper class always oppresses the lower class, by the way. They always, the upper class figures out how to get the lower class to take on more risk, and then bad things always affect the lower class more than the upper class. That works in any society. Um, it's, it just would be less horrible in a capitalist society. It's not like it wouldn't, wouldn't exist, because you, uh, you have to get people to voluntarily give up their money, in capitalism at least. So, um, Right, so anytime, anytime you're letting people, you're taking other people's opinions for when to buy and sell, that's an opening to manipulate you. So if you're somebody who is um, saying uh, Vitalik Buterin is a boy genius, so I'm just gonna do, uh, just gonna follow him, then to me, you're like, Pray. You're like somebody who's going to be eaten in the near future. 
And if you're somebody who's going around talking in buzzwords, that proves that you haven't thought much about uh, what's going on, you know, distributed ledger technology. Your prey. That's what you look like to me. And I didn't get into Bitcoin to become a predator, but it's really looking easy, doesn't it? It really looks easy now. You're just lucky I'm too, uh, too lazy to make my own ICO. Because then I would have all of your money. Um, so that's why you want to be an independent thinker. Because if you're not, that's, then you're prey. That's your only defense. Um, and it is scary because a lot of people are not uh, comfortable, are, they are uh, uh, insecure about their own intelligence, okay? So lots of people make the mistake of saying, my brain is second rate, so I'll listen to this other brain. But your brain is the only one working for you, and a second rate brain that is reliable is better than a first rate brain, which is not. So, uh, scary to be an independent thinker, but that's the reality. The reality is no other brain but yours is more reliable. Um, so, let's see. Conventional ideas are always dirty. You have to be a filter. The reason is people who have good ideas don't have any particular reason to spread them, do they? Because if you have a better idea, you use that to make more money. And if you tell people, then they're playing as good as you are. You want to have an advantage. Okay, so good ideas don't spread as easily, and the ideas that do spread easily are parasites. Because they, they trick people into spreading them, don't they? They're like uh, parasitic memes. So whenever you go into any, any environment that is adversarial, like Bitcoin, the ideas are dirty. So you have to be a filter. And... Uh, you have to reject lots of them. No matter how uh, intelligent the people appear who are saying them, okay? Um, dirty ideas. Um, sorry, guys. I, <laughs> I was really hoping that my presentation would remind me about what to say next, so. Uh, but I know I can get through this. Um, Next thing, I have uh, some, uh, so I have three pieces of advice. You, you have to develop your own ability to think independently, but I do have three basic pieces of advice about it. So the first one is, um, assume that you are in a cult and you have to figure out what it is and how to get out. Because people who are in cults don't know they're in a cult, right? do they? <laughs> so just imagine that you are in a cult and you have to figure out what it is. So I think that, uh, I think that the, uh, the Blockstream team is kind of culty, okay? Because they go around and they say, you have to support us. And... Uh, when I say things that seem obvious, like I say, uh, no, I'll just stay diversified through all of the Bitcoin forks and then whichever one wins, I'll be fine. People get mad. Um, and they say, we want to be the leaders, even though all, all, all that we can do is we know how to program, okay? So I think that that's kind of, um, kind of like a cult, the way that, well, the way that people get so emotional when I try to argue about this stuff. People get really mad about it. 
And the way that cults control people is emotional control. So you kind of train people to get emotional about issues that uh, you don't want them to think about. And also, I don't think that any of this is deliberate, but that in Bitcoin, everybody is very anxious, and it's, this has been going on for years, okay? So more recently, I think that um, uh, the, the core devs have put them in a position where they are trying to placate people's anxieties, okay? And so then, when you're trying to argue about fundamental issues, then that uh, people get anxious about it. Because, you know, if you say we don't, we don't need the core devs, then they get anxious again, right? Um, so, uh, let's see, conventional ideas are dirty. You have to be a filter. Oh, and it's okay to look stupid, because if you're an independent thinker, you can make mistakes, right? So, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Someone who is a real independent thinker might look stupid. So, uh, in fact, you should try to look stupid because you want to draw people's attention away from you. So one thing that I don't like that's been happening in Bitcoin, well, the entire model of conferences, I think, is kind of silly. So speakers are always second-rate people, okay? Because if I was really smart, I would never have written an article and drawn attention to myself, right? I would just have bought the Bitcoins and no one would know that I exist. And that would be better. So, um, it's, it's, so you should act dumb to draw attention away from yourself. That's my second piece of advice. Um, and my third one was you should embrace evil. And the reason you should do that is one of the ways that conventional ideas survive is they tell you that the opposite idea is evil. So you need to look, so remember I said you need to be a filter, idea filter. A good source is anything that people says is evil, because those ideas are overlooked. I'm not saying all the evil ideas are good, but that's a good, that's an overlooked source of ideas. So, oh, and I wish I could show you my slide for this one, because I had a, a picture from uh, William Blake's The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, and he's pretty much the coolest person of all time. Uh, but uh, uh, it's, it, it, you know, when you, when you grow up in an environment where ideas are controlled, you have a strong sense of good and evil, okay, because they don't want you to individually think about different ideas. They just want you to follow the rules, okay? So then they say, all of these things are evil. It's a blanket, blanket statement, okay? Oh, hey, if you saw my debate with Richard Hart recently, he got, called me evil, so I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> um, so finally I had uh, some heroes some role models who I think are good. Anyway, so yeah, the best independent thinker is somebody who I can't tell the difference between him and an idiot. And it doesn't matter because he takes on the risk of his decisions. So idiots take on risk because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but smart people also take on risk because they do know what they're doing. So my favorite people are the ones that I can't tell if they're stupid. Um, and uh, I think I would like to see more leaders in Bitcoin who are like this. And that's what would happen if we ran Bitcoin according to a prediction market, which is something I've been harping on recently. Because you don't have to look intelligent. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to try to appear smart if you're ruling through the prediction market. You just. You just try to be unobtrusive, and then you make your bets in the market. You take the risk for your decision, and then people see which idea has the most risk behind it, and we do that. Then we have leaders who you can't tell whether they're, they're idiots or intelligent. So my role models are, let's see, who did I have? Uh, first one was Tom Bombadil, my favorite character from Lord of the Rings. He acts like a moron, but he's really the smartest one. Because he says, I don't care if the orcs win, I'll be fine either way. He's a great investor. That's what I've been saying about Bitcoin forks. 
I say, I don't care if the orcs win. I'm fine either way. I'm not going to be drawn into your stupid conflict. So Tom Bombadil, he's my, uh, my hero. So I don't know if you're familiar with the next character, but if you've seen the anime One Piece, which is pretty much the greatest thing ever, my next hero is the main character called Luffy, and he's the, he's the pirate captain. He always acts stupid, and he gets into these stupid fights with everybody, but he always wins. And there was one scene on the show where one of the wiser characters says, he likes to pretend to be dumb. So is he really just dumb, or did he really assess the situation beforehand and he knew what he was doing? It's totally ambiguous. The, if he is actually smart, he never really gives it away. Um, so finally, my other hero is Don Quixote, because he rules with his madness, okay? So I think of Don Quixote as being like the investors and Sancho Panza as being like the developers, okay? So Don Quixote just thinks crazy things and Sancho doesn't understand that he's crazy. And, but he has to do what Don Quixote says because he is deceived as to the nature of reality. See, he, Don Quixote has deceived him with his craziness, so he has to do what Don Quixote says. And then, in book two, rich people think that Don Quixote is funny, so they play along, okay? So they create things based on what Don Quixote says. Okay, so yeah, leaders, leaders in Bitcoin, they should be like Don Quixote. Are they stupid or are they geniuses? Uh, that's, that's what I'm looking for. And those are what I think are, you know, what the real independent thinkers look like. So uh, stop trying to be impressive, act dumb and crazy, and we don't know who the real leaders are. That's, that's what I'm looking for now. And uh, did we get the talk working at all? No, okay. not at all. So. But you have five minutes for questions. Okay. <laughs> Anybody? Yes. So uh, you're an independence thinker. You said that. Oh, I no, I'm extremely stupid. Okay. So uh, <laughs> everything I said was nonsense. <laughs> so. Uh, can I just do what you do, and then I'll be independent just like you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. So for um, people to start thinking independently and looking at different resources online, what are overall themes or places you would tell them to look at or, or just to start learning about hard forks and stuff like that to understand like is this good is this bad for them to figure that out by themselves well anybody who's talking in terms of actual like investment consequences as opposed to like like who is evil and who is good and who is uh you know destroying the community and who isn't that's all what well, it, it's you know it's it's about people who are talking in terms of making the most money and uh, doing the best job avoiding risk, that's, that's what I would look for. I don't have a specific resource for you. Because nobody, if somebody knows how to do things correctly, they're not going to tell you, okay? So any source of information is suspect. Can you explain to me why what you're doing is not a paradox? <laughs> It, it, it is a paradox. It's a difficult, uh, difficult topic. <laughs> so that's why I had lots of great pictures that I wasn't able to show you, because those, those, those can affect, like you have, to, you have to show, you can't tell, right? But somebody who's doing it the best, you can't tell who they are, okay? So, but you can, you can avoid letting other people lead you too much. Okay, I think, I think that that's kind of 
uh, a, good, a good start. And you can accept the reality that you're on your own. And if you don't, if you don't know enough, then you can't, uh, you can't expect other people to take care of your anxieties. Because if you do, they will manipulate you. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, I got a two part question. First part is, do you think that's possible to have unbiased reporting? No. What type of reporting do you think the cryptocurrency community needs most? And, and how could we attain, or how can we use blockchain and cryptocurrency to maybe help with fake news and um, more, more generally beneficial reporting, more accurate reporting? Uh, I mean, you have to do work to get good information. It's impossible to have it any other way. Because any, any source of information that is initially good and affects lots of people, you know, a, a, passively, that's some, something that a manipulator would want to get in control of. So everybody, this, this is something that the, you know, the, the, the receiver, the, you know, the customer of the information, I don't want to say customer because the customer is really the advertiser, right? But the person who is receiving the information, they have to work to get good information. And if they're not, they're going to get bad information. We just have time for one more question so everybody else uh, can go uh, chat with him out in the hallway because we've got to get our next speaker up. Um, some of the information I found about you said that you made a name for yourself as a philosophical opponent to competing currencies, uh, to Bitcoin apparently, and he takes issues specifically with competing cryptocurrencies such as Litecoin, D Dogecoin, or whatever, and other <laughs> alternatives to Bitcoin. So could you elaborate? Oh, okay, sure. Well, real quick, um, the, the, uh, the best money is the one that we all use, right? It's better if we all settle on something than if we're using two currencies at the same time. So somebody who creates a new... So Bitcoin was the original idea, and since then, almost all ideas in Bitcoin have been unoriginal, because we're just doing the same thing. Well, I can create a currency too, right? It's costless. And as an investment, the, the people making new currencies are expecting other people to, uh, to take on extra risk that they wouldn't do if they were just settling on Bitcoin in, in order to make the new currency succeed. So it's an uphill battle to defeat Bitcoin. And the only reason that the alternative currencies are sustainable is because people don't know the nature of the game that we're all playing. And that's, that's my claim, anyway. But I do like Bitcoin forks. Because if you make a fork, everybody who owns Bitcoin automatically owns both sides of the chain. So there is not, there is not additional risk being taken on by the people when you take a fork, when you make a fork, sorry. So I like those. Uh, and ultimately, I, I would like to see a more investor-controlled Bitcoin, where we kind of choose which fork is going to win and... Uh, you know, the developers are, are not the leaders. Thank you very much.